What up folks, it's Alex here, and welcome to 5 Minute Fridays. <laughs> now there's often times when you're video editing that you want to make very particular, precise adjustments to a particular area of a clip. So think for example, when your volume goes too high, just for a particular moment, maybe a car goes past or there's a sudden noise, and you want to lower the volume for that particular moment and then bring it back down to normal. Or maybe you want some text to fly across your screen or animate it like I did at the beginning. Or something as simple as doing some crops, some zooms, or maybe some rotation. You can do all of that in DaVinci Resolve on the edit screen using keyframes. Now keyframes, really simply put, the markers where certain attributes change. And you just tell DaVinci Resolve where to do it and then you make the change and DaVinci Resolve will do the rest for you. And that's what we're gonna have a look at today. So here we are on the edit tab and as you can see I've already added a clip to my timeline. Now the first thing you need to do to start messing with keyframes is to make sure that you've got the inspector menu bar open on the right hand side. If you don't see the inspector just click on this icon here in the top right to show the inspector menu. In the inspector tool here you'll notice these diamonds on the right hand side next to each of the different attribute categories like composite and transform and you've also got diamonds next to each of the individual attributes. Now these are how you actually add keyframes. So you can add a keyframe for your pitch zoom individually, or you can add a keyframe for the entire category, i.e. transform. If you're just starting out, I recommend just doing it for the category until you get your head around it, and then you can start messing with the individual attributes. So let me give you a quick example of how this works. So I'm gonna select a point, on my timeline. I'm going to plot my playhead there and let's just say at this exact point I want to start zooming in on my face. So this is the point where I want some attributes to change and I want to begin zooming in. So I'm going to just go to transform and click on the keyframe. The keyframes on the inspector will go red to show that a keyframe has been added. Now as soon as you add a keyframe you'll also notice you get these two icons appear on your timeline. I'm just going to click on the diamond on the right and it'll open up this new track here and you can see the keyframe. So it shows you where you've added it. So you can also adjust it and make any changes there if you need to. So that's the point where I want my animation, I want my zoom to begin. So let's just skip forward a little bit. And let's say at this point here is where I want to be fully zoomed in on my face. So I'm just gonna add another keyframe like so. And now we've got two down here. And at this point, I'm just gonna zoom and uh, change the position a little bit, like so, and job done. Now, you'll notice next to the keyframes, because I've added the second one, we've now got these little arrows. So we've got an arrow pointing to the left. So if I give that a click, I can swap to this keyframe, and then I can swap to the right one again, and just hop between the two. So now let's just hit play, and as soon as it gets to this keyframe here, it will start zooming in and it'll be fully zoomed into the position I want by the time it gets to this keyframe. Like so. Let's say I wanted to now zoom out. So at this point here, I wanna be fully zoomed out again to back to where I was. So I'm gonna add a keyframe like so, and now we've got three. So I'm gonna set my zoom back to what it was. Like so, and we'll hit play again. It will zoom in and then zoom out and be done by this point here. Now let's look at volume. So let's go down to my volume here. We'll open the audio tab, and again, under clip volume, you've got the keyframes. So let's just say, for example, right here, this bit looks a bit louder than the rest. So I'm gonna add a keyframe, play forward a bit here, another keyframe, and then on this one, I'm just gonna lower the volume, or we'll play. That's fine, the loud bit's gone, I wanna bring the volume back up. So I'll add a keyframe to say this is the point where I want it to stop being quieter. And this is the point where I want it to be back to normal. So I'll add another keyframe. So I've got four in total. Set that back to zero. So here it starts to get quieter. It's it's quietest here. It remains at that level till here. And then it gets a little bit louder again here. And then it's back to zero. Now in my introduction, I actually had my text follow my finger. And how did I do that? Well, actually it was quite easy. I just did lots of different keyframes. So I'm gonna grab text here and I'm just gonna drop it onto my timeline. And again, it's just gonna say title. 
Now I'm actually going to make this text start just off screen. So I'm going to move it over there a little bit and then just move it down so it starts off screen. And I'm going to add a keyframe there. And then I'm just going to skip forward one frame. And my finger's starting to come into screen now. So I'm going to add a keyframe and then just bring that text up. And I'll skip forward one frame, add a keyframe, and bring it up a bit more. And we'll move it over to the left a bit as well. And next frame, keyframe, move it a bit more and over to the side. Oh, and I start moving down here. So I'm going to add a keyframe there. And then another one there. We'll move that down. Next frame, keyframe. Move that down and over that way a little bit. Next frame, it's out of shot now. So I'm going to add a keyframe. Just move that right down like so. Now if we hit play on that section, there you go. All those individual keyframes just follow my finger and the text moves up and moves down. Now if at any point you're unhappy with your changes, you can actually reset them just using this reset button on the inspector tool to get rid of any keyframes and set it back to default. And that's it. That's all there is to it. I hope that was useful. If it was, do let me know down in the comments below and give me a thumbs up. If you've got any other feedback as well, pop them down below. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, as well as some vlogs and general tech reviews, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheerio.